Hello, welcome to Come Learn with Paula. I'm so glad that you are joining me today. We are still in our study of First John. So grab your Bibles, turn to almost the very end, right? It's right uh, before Jude and Revelation and go to chapter two. We will be covering verses 15, 16, and 17. So go ahead and open up and read along with me. And I'm gonna read the whole thing and then I'll we'll go back and just talk about it, break it down, okay? So verse 14, it says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Okay, so let's uh, let's just start out and we're gonna break it down. Actually have a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. So where is our affection? What do we prioritize in life? Who do we give our attention to? Who do we give our time to? Is it the world or is it God, right? Because his word in Matthew 6, says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. So we don't need to seek them out for ourselves. We need to seek out God and then God will provide all of these things for us. And I want to read a couple more verses because uh, this is very clear. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if we don't get this right, then we don't have the love of God in us. So this is very important. Uh, let's look at Matthew 6, 25. It says, no one can serve two masters. Either, either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Okay. So it's very clear, we have to have our eyes on Jesus, right? We have to have our focus on God. Um, there's one more I wanna read before we continue on, and that is James 4.4, 4, and it says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Wow, so we don't wanna be adulterous towards God. We wanna, we wanna love him and with a pure devotion, a pure heart. Um, but we have to be very careful because uh, I'm, I'm just mindful also of James that it talks about us being enticed and drug away. Uh, and let me read this for you. It says, James chapter one, it says, uh, verse 14, but each one is tempted when by his own desires, own evil desires, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death. So our evil desires only bring about sin and death. And you know, God loves us too much to let us live that kind of a life. He doesn't want his children to be struggling their whole life, but we have to be aware that there is a real threat to a Christian to uh, be enticed by the world, to be drawn in by the world. So let's look at what the next verse says, um, the ways that we can be drawn away from our devotion to God. The first one in verse 16 says, for everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of the eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. So it breaks it down into these three sections. The cravings of sinful man, so your desires, the things we already read, evil desires pull us away. Um, then the lust of the eyes, you know, you see something, you want to have it, you know, coveting, you know, it's, it's real. And then the boasting of what he has and does. You know, the temptation is uh, for man to say, look what I've done, look at the kingdom I've built, look what I've acquired and piled up, you know, I'm ready for retirement uh, because I've done this. But in reality, 
um, you know, the verse, Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So everything that we have comes from God, right? And so we need to give him the credit, give him the glory. And then, yes, of course, he will provide everything that we need. We don't have to worry. We don't have to make it happen. He makes it happen when our priorities are correct. So there's two examples in the Bible of this of, of these three temptations. Uh, one is in the Garden of Eden when Eve is tempted to eat, eat from the fruit, right? And the second one is after Jesus had 40 days of fasting in the wilderness and then Satan comes and tempts him. So I want to look at this uh, because this is a, a practical way to see how this is interpreted, right? So let's, the Bible always interprets the Bible. So I love to do that. So let's go to Genesis 3, 6. Okay, Genesis 3, 6 says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food. So this is when uh, Satan said, Oh, you will not surely die. This is good. You need this. Uh, and it's, he, when she saw that the fruit was good for food. So what's that? Cravings of sinful man. You hunger, right? You crave it. Um, that it's pleasing to the eye. So that's the lust of the eye. It was a pretty piece of fruit. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. So that's the pride of life, boasting in what we have or do. If I was smarter, if I knew all things, I really wouldn't need God and I could do it all myself. So that's the pride of life. Then she took and she ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Okay, so that is one example of how we will fall if we get our focus off of God. So we need to keep our love and adoration on our Father. And as we do that, He supplies everything we need and we don't fall to temptation, to the evil desires that are around us. Okay, now let's go to Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 14, because this is when Jesus had just... Um, it says, well, let's start with verse one and, and let's read through this. This is when Jesus had been fasting and now he's hungry and this is the end of his fast. Um, and it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So the Spirit led him into the wilderness. Sometimes the Spirit takes us into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. I guess, I, I mean, you know, one day is hard to go without food, right? Um, and if you're watching and you are hungry, then I, my heart goes out to you. Okay, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. So what is this? This is cravings of sinful man. He was hungry. After 40 days, he was very hungry. And Satan's like, you know, turn it into, turn the stone into bread. You can do that. And so he, and you always combat the devil with the word of God. You don't talk to him. You speak the word of God. That is your sword, right? So that's how he was tempted with the cravings of sinful man. Then the devil led him up on a high place and showed him an in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and he said to him i will give you their all their authority and splendor it has been given to me and i can give it to anyone i want to if you worship me it will all be yours and jesus answered it is written worship the lord your god and serve him only so lust of the eyes right oh look at all this you can have it i'll give it to you you'll be the ruler oh you can have it. So the lust of the eyes and, you know, Jesus said, no, we worship God only. You know, I don't worship things or glory. The glory I have is from the Father, given by the Father, and I will not take it before it's my time, but he will have it one day, right? Okay, the last one. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus said, do not put the Lord to the test. 
And when, he, when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Okay, so this is uh, the pride of life or boasting in what, what you have or do. Because he could throw himself down and the angels would, they would pick him up. They would take, he, he's powerful. And he had the pride of life. He could just show his glory, show his majesty. And, uh, you know, the devil was tempting him to do that. But he said, no, 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 no. Uh, do not put the Lord your God to a test. So Jesus, unlike uh, Adam and Eve who fell to the temptation, Jesus did not fall to the temptation. And because the Holy Spirit lives within us, it is possible for us not to fall to temptation also. But we have to die to our flesh every day. That's why when we offer um, our bodies as a living sacrifice, you know, every day we're choosing to love God. We're choosing to obey the Father, to walk holy, set apart lives, so that we do not fall to temptation, so that we do not become an adulterous people that love the world instead of God. And, you know, the closer you draw to God, the more beautiful He is, the more that He offers to you uh, in the form of joy and peace and satisfaction doesn't mean your life's going to be easy your might life might be quite hard <laughs> but but you'll be with the father the father will be working in and through you and you will not be controlled by the sinful nature you'll be set free and that is a a beautiful life okay let's look at the rest of this passage and make sure we covered everything uh, we talked about in uh, the cravings of sinful man the lust of the eyes the boasting of what he has and does <clears throat> comes not from the Father, but from the world. So those things do not come from the Father. The temptation does not come from the Father. It comes from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. So I want you to think about this. This is an eternal choice. This is an eternal situation. You have the opportunity to love God the Father, and to eternally be with God the Father. Or you can love your things and you can die and you lose all your things and nothing comes with you and you will not be eternally with the Father. So it's really a big deal because this world, everything that you see passes away. You know, our body, all the things in this room, all everything that I have, um, everything will burn up one day it'll be gone but the love of the father will endure forever and how you have lived your life matters it matters for all of eternity and notice here it says the man who does the will of god so just hearing about it you know is is not uh doing the will of god we actually have to do something we have to uh do the will of god so I, I'm going to ask you a couple questions I, that I came up with from this passage. And so let's just think about these things so that we can try to put our focus on God and not on the world and not on the lust of the flesh or the eyes or the pride of life. Um, the first one I put is, where do you give your devotion and attention to? So where is your attention? Where is your devotion? You know, who do... Who do you spend time with? What do you spend time with? What do you spend time on? You know, do you spend time with the Father? Because <clears throat> that's what we need to do, right? We need to spend time with the Father who loves us. Okay, the second question is, do you really understand <clears throat> that our things will not last or that we can't take them with us? You know, um, I think it's interesting because we spend our whole life trying to gather things, gather things, gather things, so you have enough things when you're old, right? And then when you die, you don't take anything with them. And I, I think it's like a game. Um, and people just don't know the the real game. They're playing the wrong game because it's not the one with the most toys at the end of life wins. You know, it's the one who has devoted their life to God and spent time loving him and obeying him and worshiping him. Um, so we have to think, okay, what gets your what gets your attention and your devotion? Okay, the next question. Uh is, are you being driven by your cravings, lust, and or successes? So 
You know, are those, is that what drives you every day? Is that what you spend your time thinking about, talking about, working for, you know? So think about that because that is the pattern of the world. That is what the world offers, you know? Um, you know, do more, get more, be more. You can do it, you know? Um, and you know, you don't give up necessarily all of those things by being a child of God, but it's just a different way of going about it. We serve the Lord, we seek his face, we seek to please the Father, and then, you know, the things, he, he does give us the desires of our heart. He wants us to have joy full, but we just need to have the priority right. He needs to be first, and then all the other things come in right measure. Okay, and the last question I have for you is, do the priorities of your life show your love for the Father? Ooh, that's a big question, right? You know, um, the the time and the devotion, it, do the priorities show that you love the Father? And it's important because um, we want we want to have things in the right order because we don't want to be considered an adulterous people, right? And and um, this is also another verse, uh, John sixteen nineteen through 20. 20 it says, if you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will also obey yours. So the world doesn't love us. A Christian, the world doesn't love a Christian. It hates us. But God loves us. And people that love God, they love us. And we're not of this kingdom. The kingdom that we're of is of a heavenly kingdom. So today, just think about this and ask the Lord, you know, is there any place in my life where I, uh, where you're jealous for my time and my attention, uh, where I could draw close to you and seek you instead of seeking my own desires and my own pleasure. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me when I get it out of order. I don't want to make you jealous and I don't want to be unfaithful to you. I want to be faithful. So show me the right way, Lord, and teach me and forgive me and help me. Okay, well, that was quite a lot for just those three little verses. But hopefully you got something out of it. If you want to leave me a comment down below, please do so. And we'll get started on verse number 18 next time. Okay, take care. Bye.